So in this video, we want to talk about the tactics of the long drop shot. So I'm really interested in what you're trying to achieve when you're going into the back wall and the ball's sitting up off the back wall. Yeah. You've got options. What's your, what's your yeah. aim? I mean, I think if I'm getting the angle of a, if I, if I get the opportunity, which comes to me very, very rarely when I'm playing, you know, obviously at the top level, um, the guys don't give you anything. But if you do get that sniff of an angle, um, it, it, it's about, is the angle enough? Am I in position? And if I am and everything works out and I can get myself into position, I've got the space to get the angle to play, I'll go for it as a, just as a shot, an outright shot. That's all I'm thinking. I'm not really thinking, you know, in terms of a tactical, what's this going to lead to? This is just the shot. I'm going for this. I want it in there. You know, hopefully it'll win me the rally, but if not, the least I want is them moving forward so that I'm getting some work into their legs or I'm giving them, you know, something to think about really, rather than just hitting length again. So yeah, sometimes it's just a very instinctive, impulsive, I love this shot, I'm gonna play it, I'm in position to do so. And a lot of the time, because the lines that these top players are giving you are so narrow, because you're not getting angles most of the time, because they're so accurate, you are finding yourself in these sort of positions. So not conducive really to playing a backhand drop because you've not got the angle, you haven't got the space to just guide it in. So in that situation, yes, it's more of like a, a it's a more of a working thing. It's how can I show them options really? And the backhand drop, if it doesn't win me the rally, which it possibly and probably won't in most cases, if I'm playing Ali Farag or Paul Cole or whoever it is, because they're just going to get it, however good it is, it will still show them that I'm, my intent is there to go in and it'll show them I'm gonna take you in and you're gonna to have to be ready to go in so that then hopefully the drive is gonna be more, you know, or the cross court switch or the boast. Then, you've, then your other options become very hi highlighted, I guess. Yeah. So it just increases the opportunity to put more work into players' yeah. legs. They're coming further up the court, they're yeah. having to travel further, does it just become yeah. much harder just going picking exactly. up the drive off the yeah. back court, right? Yeah, and, and so within that as well, I'm, I'm trying to, like you've touched on, show them that I could play the drive. So I'm thinking at that point, when, it, when I haven't got the angle, I'm just working the drop in and the drive as a partnership. I'm thinking, how can I make this swing look as if I could drive it to then play the drop? So. And how late are you making the decision in terms of yeah. I'm gonna hit a drop, I'm gonna hit a drive? At what point are you thinking like, that's what I'm playing? Yeah, good question. Not sure I know really. I think it's just, again, it's because I've, you know, I've, I've, I've done the, the alley games or, I've done the repetition of it, or I've got my coach feeding me constant, you know, hold and hit, hold and drop, hold and hit, hold and hit, hold and drop from the back, doing it both sides, just repeating it so that then there's a muscle memory thing. It's obviously a pretty late decision, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure. It's not at the point of where you're hitting it, it's, it's, that's going to be too late. And obviously that happens because you see players messing it up because they've decided too late. but. Um, it's just very, it's very split second, isn't it? I noticed that you've got a very natural hold and delay at the top yeah. of your swing. So as you approach the ball, the racket head comes up and then yeah. it's like there's a little pause and it, it almost looks like that's yeah. the point. It's certainly from an outsider's perspective, it looks yeah. like that's the point you're making the decision, which makes it so hard for your opponent to read. Yeah. Yeah. If actually that is genuinely when you're making yeah. the decision, yeah. it's going to be a nightmare. But that pause and that natural hold at the beginning of the swing, is that something just come naturally to you or is yeah. that a deliberate? I think I was having this discussion the other day and I think I was watching um, Sam play the whole Sam Todd and sort of asking him has, has, he, has that just come to you or um, I think it was something I learnt and tried to improve more than say somebody like Lee Beachall who was, I learnt a lot from because his seemed to be just really natural he, he, you could almost not see actually see his it was, it was that subtle Whereas I feel like mine has been a bit more manufactured. I've worked at it more over the years and brought it in. And as the game has moved that way, I mean, people weren't really holding it when I started playing. They weren't really holding it. It wasn't really happening. You might get so Lee Beecher was doing it. Jonathan Power did it. But really, it wasn't a thing then. Now everyone's got these changing swings with the variety of swing and variety of holds and, and all, all these variations, which is really clever. Um, so I think I learned it. Um, probably more, say, than someone like Lee did, who had 
incredible sort of um, natural. I think it's become a little bit of a ponty thing that's maybe started by Lee. If you've kind of looked up to Lee and thought, oh, I'll emulate that, and now Sam's on, on here. Possibly, yeah. You, thinking... But also I'm seeing it, you know, I know D David Campion's got his England players working on it, you know, all, all it's a big thing with the England squads. I think it's, uh, I, I don't know whether all the Egyptians are just doing it because it's just so natural to them. Maybe they don't work at it, maybe it just happens. Um, but I think now you're seeing it, it could, have been, it could have been a Ponzi thing, but I think that it's definitely one of the things that Malcolm's always encouraged us to delay, to, to, to hold, to just, just stop the player as much as you can, just to give them the bit of confusion. Um, so in terms of taking the ball off the glass, are you, I mean, with a little bit of technical execution here, but it links into tactics, are you trying to play the shot as, kind of late, as, as late as possible here to really try and break your opponent's rhythm? I mean, yeah, again, not, not necessarily. If I'm just, sometimes I am just going for the shot. It's a pure, simple, this is going to be a straight shot. I'm not going to really think about the delay. But if I do too much of that, it's just going to get too predictable. I'm not quick enough to respond. If I just keep playing the same swing, that volley drop, it'll get me into trouble. I'll get strokes given away. There needs to be a difference. They need to have other options in their heads. So yes it will be later on a lot a lot more of a percentage of them rather than just a simple I'm going for this shot it's quite a late hold it's that I think I think uh, Ranima Ranima Walili does it really well I'm Shabana did it well where it's just that sort of there to then it all happens in that sort of middle bit mm -hmm. just that sort of yeah. something happens there and that's where they make the decision of whether it's going deep or yeah that so. makes sense. can you maybe just explain the effect of the hold on your opponent and what you're trying to do to their to their rhythm of movement and what yeah. we're trying to get them to do on the tee by putting in that little delay. Yeah. Right? Why is it so effective? Um, I think I think yeah. I think I think if we can get them to stop just a little bit, obviously there are obvious repercussions there because they have to go again rather than just flow through the tee. So I guess if we can get them get players doing that, but then it's almost an accumulation factor. Like hopefully this is going to help me in half an hour's time, because if I keep giving them so many options and hold and hit, later on I'll find if I've worked hard, I can then start to hold and do something a little bit more exciting. Whereas often early on in the match when you're both physically fresh, it's hold hit hold hit. There's a percentage of length balls, just because. Can't you know if I, if I go too risky too early with the hold and the drop? It's but then you find that just because I've been holding for a long time, it doesn't give me immediate results. But it you know in half an hour or one all and five all, you might start seeing a little chink in their movement, or you've been playing so many options that they're not then sure which one, and then they're a little bit slower, and then you can move the boast in or whatever. You know, so it's it, it's also accumulation factor rather than just. I just want to do something off this shot. It's like, stay with it, you know, keep faith in the holding and the differences and yeah. it could help you later. I think that's a hard mental thing for players to understand. They, they want immediate um, sort of payoffs mm -hmm. and it just squashes, it's just too hard for that. You've got to just, you know, bide your time and just, yes. yeah, and, and just believe that the variations that you're adding in early can pay off later. So, and you're trying to set your stall out pretty early on with the drop shot you're showing, you have an intention to maybe go into that corner, show your opponent, look, I've got this weapon, you need to be ready to cover that. Yeah, it could, yeah, it could be an early thing. Again, you've got to be, I think you've got to be very careful with some players. It has to be, on my terms, it has to be completely the right shot to play. I'm not going to go silly early on against someone who's really very fast. That would be a bit reckless. Um, you know, because I'm not, I'm not, you know, I haven't figured it out and it's not, the, it's not the right time. But then also on the contrary to that, you might find a situation, the court might be a good conditions for the court to take in the shot and it might be just a good idea to send one in a little bit earlier than you might normally because already you've got the player sort of thinking, well, that, that, that's, that option's already there for him and he's going to play it, so I need to be ready. That all so, makes complete sense. <laughs> try it, I hope so. Well, there's a lot of, uh, lot of great tactical insight there uh, from James. So, see, the next phase is understanding how to execute the shot. So, we'll begin to take a look at the technical elements in the next video.